the judges at a diving competition assess whether a dive is good or not? And how do they give their scores? What do they do before anything else? They use criteria. In other words, they observe the dive from many different points of view, keeping in mind, for example, synchronization, distance from the diving board, the angle of entry in the water, and so on. For each of these criteria, they have indicators, reference point that can say if each criterion has been fully satisfied or not. For example, the average distance from the board must not exceed two feet, or 60 centimeters, or the ideal angle for entry in water must be 90 degrees. Values are given to each of these indicators so that they will allow the judge to assign a certain score to the diver. When we are about to carry out an assessment in an educational setting, we do the same thing even though sometimes this happens in a more implicit way. We have in mind the points of view we are using to observe the performance of the students. We know what the intended performance should be, and then we give that an adequate value. In some cases, however, it could be interesting and useful to plan this dynamic. This means intentionally thinking about what our criteria are, meaning our points of observation of the performance, what indicators match those criteria, and the values we wish to attribute them. To organize our thoughts regarding the criteria, the indicators and assessment, we can try to organize a grading rubric. The rubric is a conceptually simple tool, an organized table, where we find the description of the criteria. In this case, we are looking at a rubric that can help us grade an essay. Potential criteria could be the comprehension of content that comes through from the essay, the quality of the expressed concepts, the accuracy of the writing, the management of bibliography and quotes. For each criterion, we'll have indicators that tell us if the performance related to that criteria was fulfilled or not. In this case, related to the criterion of writing accuracy and balancing of the sections, we can see that the highest score is the criterion will be achieved when the writing is accurate and well balanced in relation to the key points in the essay. The indicator corresponds to the definition of a score we will attribute. The analytical rubric tool is first and foremost a planning tool. It is a tool that leads the teacher to reflect on these criteria, therefore the points of view from which they will observe the performance and which are the levels of the intended performance, from the best to the worst, and how many points it is worth in terms of scoring. We can find many examples of this. In this case, we are talking about a problem in the scientific field. We might find criteria related to the comprehension of the problem, the quality of the solution strategy, and the calculations. Here we can notice that when thinking in terms of indicators, the criterion of the development of the calculations can involve a series of possible indicators, from the ones that identify the worst performance where the calculations are mostly inaccurate, to a slightly better performance where the calculations include a number of inaccuracies, to one 
where the calculations are mostly correct but include a few imprecision, to the case where all calculations are correct. This is how we can describe not only what my assessment model will be, but also what the intended performance will be. In this way, my students know that I expect a full understanding of the problem and its relevance in connection of the content of the program. A particularly original and innovative strategy in the development of the solution, theoretical basis applied precisely and accurately, calculation and the use of notations are correct and aligned to the international standards of the field and so on in relation to all other areas. It's however not always possible to analyze a student's performance in such detail. There are certain performances that require more complex and articulate judgments that do not reach this level of detail. Even in this case, it is interesting to try and to make an effort to formulate them. The tool we use in this case is the so-called holistic rubric. This rubric does not articulate all the criteria of evaluation on the basis of the levels included for each indicator. It rather provides a more complex and in-depth description of the performance that reflects the vision of the professor from a more articulated point of view. For example, in this case we talk about a project work. Project work demonstrates an in-depth understanding of the context, a correct interpretation of the regulatory and procedural constraints and creativity, together with a proper use of methods and technologies in order to communicate effectively and synthetically all the key choices. In this case, we refer to a fairly complex performance to which the teacher does not deem it necessary to detail the single criteria of indicators, but prefers to go towards a more integrated evaluation. Both cases, the analytic rubric and the holistic rubric, can be helpful in different contexts. The important thing is that as teachers we take a moment to reflect and formalize how to observe and assess the performance that the students will carry out to demonstrate the intended learning outcomes. Normally, when we start designing a grading rubric, whether analytic or holistic, it makes us take a great step further in understanding what we want our students to achieve in terms of knowledge, abilities and skills. So it is always advisable to verify if they are consistent with the intended learning outcomes we had initially formulated. Let's recap. During the planning of this important stage of the assessment, it is particularly relevant to consider which are the criteria we want to adopt, and therefore the points of view from which we will observe the performance of the student. Furthermore, it is also important to consider the indicators, the descriptions of the various levels of the intended performance in relation to the various points of view and the score we will attribute to the various levels of the performance. All of this content can be integrated and described in rubrics, which we describe as analytic if they detail each criterion, indicator or score, or holistic if, on the other hand, they focus on a more integrated description of the various possible performances. Mm -hmm.